Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another lockdown live stream. Um, I think maybe just to give a few more people a chance to tune in, we should do a few introductions. Uh, I'm Charlie, this is Polly, David, Romany, Yanina, Baby Olinka, uh, Doris the dog, Bear Bear the Otherwise teddy bear. Otherwise known as Random. Barbunia. Yeah. And Oi, dum -dum. come here, Dum Dum. No, not Dum Dum. Dum Dum. And this is Dum Dum. This is Barbunia. Aww, dum -dum. Highly intelligent. Um, we, uh, oh yes. Uh, so that's all of us. Yeah. And our names and what species we are. Um, Did we do the species <laughs> part? And here we are. Here we are. Pretending <laughs> to be in Greece. <laughs> At Katsikas, yeah, Katsikas, where Vola. we have this lovely sit. What do you yeah. mean, oh, la la la? <laughs> <laughs> I've slightly wow. lost it, actually. We've been together for a month now. Yeah. Over it's a month. It's a long month. Um, together we are the Von Trapped family singers. Um, only some of them sing. Only some of them Luckily. sing, yeah. Uh, how's everyone feeling after a month locked down? I'm fine! Yeah, <laughs> Romani? <laughs> Romani's about to turn 18 and she's yeah. very sad. She's not going to be able oh, to go yeah. out to all the Oh, wow. Yanina, how are you feeling? I'm fine. You're fine. Alinka? Alinka hasn't noticed. I um, think it suits Alinka quite well. I'm with well. Alinka. What, you haven't noticed? <laughs> <laughs> so for those watching for the first time, we started doing these live streams to launch my mum's new novel, A Theatre for Dreamers, uh, which came out very recently. Uh, shot into the bestseller charts, critically acclaimed, well done mother. Um, and people sort of seem to be enjoying these live streams, and we certainly are. So we thought we'd basically just carry on. Um, yeah. Anyone has any hope suggestions? Huh? And I hope they're enjoying them. I hope they're enjoying them, yeah. We hope so. I mean, laughing we'll, with us rather than yeah. at us. Would we'll be stop nice. when we'll people. Both, they like. Yeah. <laughs> we'll stop when people stop watching. Oh. Um, well, Inka just discovered lamb. So, Alinka, <laughs> thank you for that. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Arena. Oh, yeah, who's choosing? Let's we've got Sarah Lee. We've got, got Sarah. Arena. Hi, Sarah Lee. Um, so, as you're watching, if you have any questions or comments, uh, get them in and we'll try and answer them throughout the show. Um, so, yes, tonight we know what we're doing. Yes, tonight is, mm -hmm. this. T in fact, today is the 60th anniversary of the day that Leonard Cohen first set foot on Ibra. And as he's, as this is something that happens in my novel, yeah. we thought we would stick with that for today. Yeah. And then after today, we could see how it goes. But shall I just read Leonard's arrival on Ibra? Yes. yes. Is that a good idea? Yeah. Yes. Are we, do we want that? Yeah. Okay. Yes. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe someone's read it for themselves by now. Um, okay. Cats lays on warm rocks. The harbour is flat as a mirror. The Easter bunting has been spirited away. Fishing nets are laid out for mending. Donkeys carry bales of dried sponges from the factory to the dock. The butcher walks past in his bloody apron. Though it has only been a fortnight since my arrival, this girl with her basket of Chinese aubergines feels like she's part of the island's welcoming committee as the Canadian poet disembarks. He arrives in the port unhurried in soft soles, looking around and smiling at everything he sees, like someone returning home from a long journey. He looks easy in his clothes, wears a cap and sunglasses, carries a green typewriter and a smart leather suitcase, a guitar strapped to his back. Janie and Edie skip beside him in tight pedal pushers and striped sailor shirts, clearly ecstatic to have met such an interesting new friend on the boat back from Athens. I narrow my eyes as they dance attendance on the approaching stranger. I've grown possessive of the island, as bad as the oldsters out here on the cobbles, with our judgment as bitter as Nikos Katsikas's coffee beneath its sugar. George is pretending to take an interest in my plans, ribbing me, so what does a little Ricky of blessed Bayswater find to write about? What's your plot? I'm thinking of a mystery story about my mother, I say, making sure Charmian hears. She flashes a distracted smile my way. Sounds like a winner, she says. I mean, did you ever drive, did she ever drive you any place in her open top car? Shush, she says, divert, diverting our gaze with a bossy tilt of her head. 
Janie and Edie lead the newcomer to our table like, a, like sirens overjoyed by a lucky catch. Leonard is courteous, pulls off his cap. His hair is thick and wavy, his brow dark and serious. His grin is lopsided. There's something charming in the stoop of his shoulders. A carapace of shyness, perhaps. But as he says his hellos, his voice is as deep and confident as that of a village elder. Charmian welcomes him with the full force of her smile, sends Patrick scurrying to find him a chair. Axel Jensen is standing to leave, and the dark-haired girl is folding her sketchbook. Jimmy is staring so hard at her I want to kick him. Thank you, Doris. It isn't only the newcomer's voice that commands attention. Dark stubble and good manners make him seem older than his 25 years. He lights a cigarette and hands it to Charmian, as you might to a long-acquainted friend, lights another for himself. He leans back and runs his hand, back and forth, back and forth, along his chin and jaw, says his last shave had been at his digs in Hampstead. The writers pull their chairs closer when they hear that he's a published poet. They are devils at a feast, tightening the circle as he talks of a little room where he might finish blackening the pages of a novel. The materials are very beautiful. Everywhere you look, nothing insults you, he's saying, as Edie and Janie snake around. So that was Leonard Cohen's arrival, his very first, the very first time he set foot on Idra. 60 years ago today. And he, 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 he and who was that? Who was he then? He, wa he wasn't a musician. No, he was he, he had, he, he had learned guitar and he had actually played in a, in a little band called the Buckskin Boys. But no, he was a 25 year old poet. He'd published one collection of poetry in Canada. He'd never been out of North America before. He had um, got a, he had a government grant from ca the Canadian government. He travelled first of all to England, found it a bit grey and gloomy, and then met some people who who suggested Greece and Idra in particular, and kind of landed and immediately thought, oh yes, I could be happy here. Partly because he met Charmian Clift and George Johnston on the port, and they were doing exactly what he wanted to do, which was live in the Mediterranean, and write books. Should we have one of his poems now? I've, I've yes, got one I, th I think, here. yeah. This is from his third collection, published in 1964, uh, called Flowers for Hitler. Uh, and the poem is, well, you can probably tell us more about the poem than I can. It's just no, written. You just, you just read it. It's written right. in Idra, and, um, and it's, it is one that actually really does give you a sense of Idra, actually. The beauty and the, and, and, and the other under, dark underside. Idra. 1963. The stony path coiled around me and bound me to the night. A boat hunted the edge of the sea under a hissing light. Something soft involved a net and bled around a spear. The blunt death, the cumulus jet. I spoke to you, I thought you near. Or was the night so black that something died alone? A man with a glistening back eat the food against a stone. So that was that. Yeah, and poor little octopus. Poor octopus, yeah. <coughs> uh, without much further ado, here's a lovely Leonard Cohen song. A more recent one. Yeah, the one that we love. One. We love. Is that oh. the one we're doing now? Yes. Okay. This is Excellent. called... <laughs> I'm fine. Romy, this is called If It Be Your Will. Yeah, no, I <laughs> It's really, fine. We've really deteriorated, haven't we? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Composure. Yeah, be professional, please, Ray. Yeah. 
in there. That was lovely. We're getting getting lots and lots of questions and comments coming in, so thank you for those. One thing that people are asking, uh, a lot of people are asking, Romany, how long have you been playing the harp for? Um, I have had about six lessons. I played it for about a year when I was 11 and then stopped for like seven years. And then, yeah, I've had about six lessons now. Good good harp teacher. Give her a shout out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. My harp teacher is Heather Wrighton. Contact her if you need any help with your musical skills. Um, lots of love, Heather. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you, Romany. Well answered. Um, and I think you said that it's, it's actually lovely being all locked up together with a harp player rather than the piano, yeah. a, a trombone player. Or, or someone practicing the drums. Yeah. That would be quite tough, yeah. I think. Yeah. David, what would you? Um, what, what's the instrument you'd least lo- like to be le- locked up with? What could Romney take up to really drive you? Well, mad? one of the most beautiful instruments that I love, absolutely the most, is the violin. But the starting stages yeah. are the most painful thing. And you have there. personal experience. Of that. I do. Yes, my sister learnt the violin when I was when we were both very young. Yeah, it was I, a nightmare. Yeah. I how, think, how was it when everyone in the house was learning the piano? Um, um, it's, the piano is okay. It's, it's good. Hello, baby. <laughs> the progress is in small but easy stages, and it's all quite recognisable. And, yeah. and the notes are, are often right. You know. Yeah. I mean, we do right. sometimes have Charlie right. on the kazoo. No, right. Quiet. Charlie you. on the kazoo. Silence. Char- Charlie Charlie on the kazoo. Right. Um, sort of quiet. Boring. <laughs> I'm the MC. I decide who talks. <laughs> Yanina, would you like to read another Leonard Cohen poem, please? Uh, Shall I put it in context? Will you just tell us a bit about what so, it's about? So this, the poem that Yanina is about to read was written in 1960. It's actually, it, it, it's written in the course of my novel by Leonard Cohen for Axel Jensen at the point that he leaves Marianne. And um, Yanina will read it. Now that you are so thoroughly engaged with my earrings. Okay. Shh, I'm the MC, I say shh. Mama, Mama's going to read one night I burned a house I loved. It lit a perfect flame. 
in which I saw some weeds and stone below, not anything. Certain creatures of the air, frightened by the night, they came to see the world again and perished in the light. Now I sail from sky to sky and all the blackness sings against the boat that I have made of mutilated wings. Beautiful. All right, we're going to take some of your questions that are coming in. Um, we've got one from John Sutherland. Hello, John. Oh, hello, That's a John. familiar hello, name. John. Um, and yeah, keep your questions coming in. We're going to we're going to be taking them as they come in. John says, uh, the Cohen, the, the Leonard Cohen that arrived on Idra sixty years ago could have gone in three ways. Okay, uh, what effect did Idra have on him? Do you think in nudging him towards the uh, what part do you think Hydra had on him in nudging him towards the path he chose? Well, I think um, it was fortuitous that he met um, George Johnston and Charmian Clift, who he did in later life credit with teaching him a lot. I think he actually said everything he knew about writing, but he may, that may have been hyperbole. Um, but they certainly showed him how he could live in a lovely white house on a Greek island and and about how work ethic in the end would, would pay off and, and pay the bills. And I think that was a great lesson for him and one that he, for the rest of his life, valued. OK, we've got some more questions that have come in. Um, what's your favourite cheese, everyone? <laughs> asks uh, Tim Laurie from Hull. Thanks, Tim, for your question. Um, <laughs> shall I go first? Yeah, you go um, first. Well, I must say, I'm, I'm partial to a bit of Osso Arati. <laughs> I can't lie. Um, Daddy? She's a sheep's cheese sort of Yeah, girl, I'm a sheep's cheese she? sort of gal. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> oh, you know. I like lots of different ones. I'm, I'm very still very. You like the whole cheese board, don't you? I like Come the whole cheese board. Come on, quick answers, please. Just okay. one. Not, we don't need a necessary okay. one. All right, one when, cheese answer. When okay. they this do. Is not I mean, it's quite, complicated this answer. This is not Charlie. quatro fromage. This is okay. uno fromage. Okay. okay. <laughs> Wednesday <Okay>. day. <laughs> Wednesday day. <laughs> you need it. I also like goat's cheese. Let's talk. Yeah, my, mine is baby bell. FYI. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> cheese drain. Um. Uh, Mark Sorry. from Twitter says, I have a question about your dedication to your daughter, Romani. Oh. No doubt she is certainly de deserving, but is there any other significance? I guess he means the, the fact that your book is dedicated yes. to yeah, Romani rather than your yes. emotional dedication to Romani. Well, um, <laughs> uh, my emotional dedication to Romani is absolute. The reason the book is dedicated to Romani is that she is... The, it could have been dedicated to Romani and Alinka, um, because it is actually dedicated to all women and I think particularly younger women who don't have to go through the sorts of things that the women in this book do because we're now in a you know in a much better place for women and so it's dedicated to Romani and all other young women so that they can learn some yeah some lessons from the past I guess in, in a weird way and it's also dedicated to Romani because she played a blinding Marianne which may sound like code but basically Marianne lived with the two writers, Axel Jensen and then Leonard Cohen on Idra, and she put a gardenia and a sandwich on their desks and made sure they had everything they needed. And I have to say that Romani was superb. I make a banging she makes beans on toast. an amazing cup of tea and beans on toast when I'm sort of flagging. So, yeah, she was my Marianne. Uh, we've got a question. I had a whole list of questions from uh, Facebook that I forgot to print off, sorry. But one of them was um, about you, you uh, saying it was complimenting you and then saying, does David ever, and then you're, that you're a good guitarist as well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and asking Polly, does David ever dirty his hands in the washing up? Um, it's never been known yet. <laughs> Why do you assume that Polly does the washing up? What are these old fashioned <laughs> gender norms which you're person in the to? Spivas says, which person in the family is the best cook and what is your favourite dish of that person? Mm. Well, the most frequent cook is David and my, my favourite dish of that person is posh cheese on toast. Mm, posh cheese on toast is good. Yeah. What's your favourite dish of that person? Oh, of that person. I mean, it's a really weird one, but like just some normal stock with oat bran in. <laughs> oh God, Charlie, what's your favourite dish Bar of that is low. person? Of that person, hmm, that is very, very difficult. This person is also a good cook, yeah. and at the moment we're having a lot of nettle-based weed. Eat nettle. the weed. We, we, nettle, eat sticky the weeds. willy. Yeah. 
And he's out hunting for snails. Out snails. Snails is the next thing I'm saying. I'm not eating them. You are eating them, whether you like it or not. You might not know that you're eating them. (laughs) Uh, We've got some more questions. Blah, blah, blah. Charlie, you can't say blah, blah, blah. <laughs> no, there's just a lot of Well, them. I'm going to say something while okay. you're waiting. Oh, yeah, you, you, got, you had something question. you wanted to say. I want to say happy birthday to Annabelle Murillo, um, who has been a constant, brilliant companion in the writing of this book. She was on Idra herself um, in, in the, I think, in the 70s, so it would have been better if it had been in the 60s, but even so, she has been an amazing companion to everything that's in this book. And um, I also want to say that Gavin Elder came to Idra with us. Um, God, it's five weeks ago. It feels like five years ago now that we mm. were on Idra and made these incredible films um, in all the various locations that are in the book. And um, I've been sort of putting those out on Twitter and Facebook and who know, uh, knows where, but they are such good films and they're such a testament to Gavin's incredible filmmaking. And I also wanted to say that um, Newham Books, hello, um, any WHAM books um, have been fantastic and um, Vivian Archer who runs that bookshop is sending out signed copies from her front room so if anyone wants a signed copy she's the person and you can email them and that's the end of my All right. well we've got loads more live questions thank you for all of your questions that are coming we've got some really really good ones um, that have come in one for you Romany Romany you said you didn't want to pursue a singing career but you obviously Mm. love to play music this is from Isabel so what do you want to be and do in life to thrive as a person? To thrive as a person? Um, well, I want to be an actor, primarily sort of Shakespeare on the stage. The globe would be, you know, pretty nice. <clears throat> uh, I also like photography, if you've seen my Instagram. And maybe some writing, some articles, okay. some, some plays. Bit, bit of everything, basically. Yeah. Basically, yeah. she doesn't know. Um, uh, she no, she bloody does. does. Yes. <laughs> All right, next question. Noella Ernest, a follow up from the previous question. What is in your posh cheese on toast? Oh, that's a secret. Oh, All no, right. you, come on, you have to share in these Well, it's, it's a mixture of cheeses it's and it's got mustard and it's got bits and pieces, you know. What? It's got the leftover it's brie, which is what makes it delicious. Yeah. Favourite Elvis song? Quick answers. Favourite Elvis song? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I got it there before you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, we've Lovely got tender. we've got we've got because everyone everyone obviously is in well, most people are in lockdown. A question for you both: uh, Are you experienced or you are experienced parents? Do you have any tips for good things to stop the kids from climbing the walls at this difficult time? That's from Simon. Thank you, Simon. Um, well, my top tip, but you you do need to have a garden for it. Really, is this is a really good time of year to have an incubator and to stick some eggs in it and hatch some chicks which might actually be really great later for having some eggs. But I mean, I know that that is quite a kind of specific thing, but it is the best fun that you guys ever had was, you know, trying to make the chicks (laughs) think that you were their parents. Romany loved her cockerel. She did love her cockerel. Henry Elizabeth, who you? Next question. Don't talk about miserable things. Um, this is a question for you, Papa. Uh, my four- this is from Tana Morrell. Tana Morrell says, My 14-year-old son is learning oh, to play guitar. What advice would you give him? Uh, just keep practising and copying. Copy, you know, learn how to do what other people do, and you will gradually develop your own um, essential self out of that. All right, we're going to move on. Maybe we'll feed some questions, more questions in towards the end. Um, but we're slightly running out of time. Um, oh, thank you for the, all of your lovely, exist. lovely questions. Actually, I, I did have a thought, yeah. which was we've all been enjoying this. This was still sort of linked to your book because it's 60 years since Leonard Cohen arrives. That's, a, that's, a, that's something that happens in your book. But if we were going to carry on doing these live streams, if you want us to carry on this... Maybe not on Maybe tonight. you might not. It's been a bit <laughs> shambolic tonight, so sorry about that. <laughs> Um, but I don't know, what should we, how, how could we do it? Something book, music related, yeah. books and the songs that... Always happy to talk about books. Yeah. You're always happy to play a song. Yeah. yeah. We, could, we, we could broaden it out into, yeah. into talking about a particular book or topic and songs that are to do with that. Yeah. Or if anyone watching has any ideas about what we could do next, then yeah. do, do, you know... Do let us know. Do write in. <laughs> 
Um, so we're going to have a poem next, yeah, I let's, think. Let's, Another well, Leonard Cohen poem. We should poem. finish with Leonard Cohen. Yeah, I think. and then we'll have a, a, a song to round things okay. off at the very end. So th this is a this is a better known Leonard Cohen poem about um, his time on Hydra. It was written in 1985. So this is him looking back on these the golden time of when he was a young man on Hydra. Greece is a good place to look at the moon, isn't it? You can read by moonlight. You can read on the terrace. You can see a face as you saw it when you were young. There was good light then, oil lamps and candles and those little flames that floated on a cork in olive oil. What I loved in my old life, I haven't forgotten. It lives in my spine. Mariana and the child, the days of kindness. It rises in my spine and it manifests as tears. I pray that loving memory exists for them too, and the precious ones I overthrew for an education in the world. <laughs> and um, whenever you two are ready, we let's have, have the last thing, of a, song to, a song to see us out. So thank you everyone thank you. for watching. We've enjoyed this, hope you've enjoyed this, and yes. Yeah. And and, yeah, and, and well done, well done, Roni. Yeah. Roni, we wanted to tell you collectively as a yes, family, we, did. we think you have ah, talent. Talent. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed well to think I have talent. You're my family. And you're very brave. And also, biased. you're brave. Yeah. I wouldn't do it. Thanks for the dance. I'm sorry you're tired. The evening has hardly. Thanks for the dance Try to look inspired One, two, three, one, two, three, one There's a rose in your hair Your shoulders are bare You've been wearing this costume forever So turn up the music Pour out the wine Stop at the surface The surface is fine We don't need to go any deeper Thanks for the dance I hear that we're married One, two, three, one, two, three, one And the baby you carried It was almost a daughter or a son There's nothing to do But to wonder if you Are as hopeless as me And as decent We're joined in the spirit Joined at the hip Joined in the panic Wondering if we've come to some sort of agreement. La 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 First, we were last in line in the temple of pleasure. But the green was so green, and the blue was so blue, and I was so I, and you were so you. The crisis was bright as a film. Love